Tom. After what you did to him last night, I doubt it. That's it? Well, I'd like to be able to fix you a great big huge breakfast and say thank you for rescuing me last night, but I don't have the time. Vanessa, quite. that guy almost raped you last night. Aren't you going to press charges? When the night has come, and the night is come. Been driving all night, have you? Yep, we just got in from Springfield. On your way to one of those uh, fancy ski resorts, aren't you? No, no, no. No, we, uh, we just came up here to get married. Well, congratulations. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, uh, can you recommend a good hotel, maybe? Oh, there's no hotels around here. Just motels. And uh, they're all closed up for the winter. Great. So now what are we going to do? I just realized where we are. Come on, I got the perfect place. Okay. Hey, I'm leaving the hat up here on the counter. All right. spring-like weather we've been having. A Canadian cold front's heading our way from the north. Temperatures are expected to plummet. Won't you stand? Stand right. If... All right, thanks a lot. Listen, I'm sorry I woke you up so early. All right, bye now. What are you doing up so early? I had to make a phone call. Tossed and turned all night. Thinking about your father, weren't you? Yeah. That was his friend, Paul Summerfield, on the phone. He said as soon as he can, he'll send me these letters from my parents. So what about Eric Levonacek? The man is a fraud. He and Alexandra deserve each other. What is taking you so long? Frank Cooper managed to find Eric in Paris, and you can't even find him right here in Springfield. Did you check the hotels? Then check the flop houses and the bars. That's his usual territory. Just find him, today. Still mad for me, I see. Where have you been? And how did you get in here? The door was unlocked. Poor darling. Did you hope against hope that I'd sneak into your boudoir last night? I'd have shot you if you had, and where it hurts, I promise. Where have you been? Wandering the streets of Springfield, mulling over your plea. Well, are you going to help me convince Nick you're his father? I believe an exchange was discussed. The contract for your concert tour. Not that I can imagine anyone paying to see a has-been like you. Well? It appears uh, satisfactory. Good. Then let's get on with it. With perhaps uh, a few minor adjustments. Take it or leave it. You will help me with Nick or I'll break your fingers one by one. Huh? You didn't think I was going to fall for that. I'm just going to go out to the kitchen to make coffee routine, did you? I needed to think. So? Are you going to press charges? No. Vanessa? I... I wasn't hurt, fortunately. And therefore, I would really 
rather forget about this night. Vanessa, you're practically giving the guy a license to try it again. There's not going to be a next time. I'm never going to let Jack Kiley near me or anywhere near Spalding. What about other women? They may not be so lucky. It was. Don't... I think it was just an isolated incident. Something to do with me. I don't think so. The man knew you were alone when he came back to the house. He walked into your bedroom. Obviously, he thought he could get away with it. And if you don't press charges, he will have. I just can't really believe that he thought that he could just... I don't know why I'm so surprised. It's just that old boy network. You know, when I stop and think that there are actually guys out there who think that I do business by sleeping around, it makes me so angry that I don't know... All right, all right. So maybe then this is your chance to prove them wrong. Go to the police. I can't go to the police. There are other people involved here. I have a son. That is something to consider. Yes. What? You know how much trouble he had just with the fact that I was dating other people. What What am I going to do? Try and explain to him that, that there, there was a rape or an attempted rape? We will sit down and explain it to him. And say what? He's very young. Now, what about the press? He, he didn't get a hold of it. It would be a big sensational thing everybody would know. You're worried about Alexandra. Of course I am. And I am president of Spalding Enterprises, and there's been a lot of scandal this past year. She would support you. Oh. Oh, she might, but she wouldn't like it. Look, it's too risky. Nothing really happened. I don't think it's worth the trouble. with you. I'm gonna go home and get Ben ready for school. Fletcher, wait a minute. Now, I think that Jack Kiley learned his lesson. Men like that don't think with their brains. Now, when you change your mind, you call me. I'll be an eyewitness. Okay, I'll call you if I... Lock the door. Oh, good. Oh, some more. Uh, we do need another round of oranges. Have to have something to toast my boys joining my company. Got it. So tell me, how does it feel to be part of the family business, Dylan? Well, to tell you the truth, I didn't know how it was going to be working for Lewis Construction. But now that I've started, I love it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so it's going okay. Yeah. Good. You know that idea I had for redesigning the Gibson project? Yeah. Well, it looks like they might use it. All right. Great. It should cut the cost of building by about 5%. And he saves me money, too. This is too much. I'm really proud of this boy. <laughs> I'm going to work for Lewis Oil one day, too. Yeah, sure you are. And I'm really proud of this boy, too. You should have seen the report card he came up with this month. Oh, did, did I tell you that my uh, bridal shower for Holly was a big hit? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Well, it's not my fault that Holly just disappeared. Oh, darling, we're just razzing you. <laughs> okay, let's have a toast. Uh, to the Lewises, a family of superstars. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Me too. How come she's not here? Oh, honey, she has more important things to do. She's in love. Hey, Sam. Excuse me. Sam. Hey. Oh, hey. Hi. Doing? Oh, I'm fine. Could I get some coffee, please? Sure, just ask the waitress. I don't work here anymore. Oh, why not? Well, I'm in the training program at Lewis Construction. Well, that's great, Dylan. Great. So, how you doing? Um, okay. Hey. You didn't know if Harley spent the night at Nadine and Billy's last week? <laughs> why? Isn't she upstairs? No, and I'm worried about her. She didn't show up at all last night. The sooner I get those letters, the sooner I can get Alexandra off my back. Nick, don't let her upset you. How can I not? I mean, I can't concentrate on my career. My, my bank balance is practically down to zero. I already told you not to worry about money. No, I won't do that, Melinda. I mean, maybe people like Eric Lubanichek can live off of other people's money. I won't do it. He really got to you last night, didn't he? I don't give a damn about him. Why can't you just admit what he said about being your real father upset you? Alexandra probably paid him to say that. 
I mean, what is it going to do? What can I do to convince that lady that I'm not her son? I've tried everything. Everything? Except ignoring her. Oh, yeah, that would be a trick. Ignore Alexandra? I mean, how can I do that when she keeps playing these mind games with me? Well, don't play them anymore. She, she's only wearing you down. You know, you're right. I mean, I'd rather be spending my energy dealing with my life. Exactly. Like concentrating on this story I'm supposed to be working with, with Fletcher. I haven't done a damn thing with that. You know, I'm gonna go see him right now. Hey, you wanna come with me? No, I've got something I need to take care of. Thanks. Hey, I'd do anything to see you happy. I am. Uh, as long as I've got you. finished reading. It's a standard contract. Contracts. I've never been very good at contracts. Uh, I know. That's one of the many excuses you gave years ago for not marrying me. A love such as ours transcended earthly ties. I agreed to all your outrageous demands. Just sign it. There's no mention of an incentive clause. Incentive? For what? Convincing Nick I'm his real father. You said you'd talk to Nick if I financed your concert tour. Talk, yes, convince. Now that's another matter entirely. Are you no it good? It would be quite tiring. I'd probably need a vacation in Barbados, say, or better yet, the Costa del Sol. Your vacation in hell before I'll agree to that. If we can't come to terms... All I'm right. Swindler. And uh, naturally, uh, champagne in all my dressing rooms. I never said I'd stay on the wagon uh, forever. And a valet, preferably female, blonde, curvaceous. Absolutely not. All right, then. A brunette. I do have my needs. What you have is a lot of gall. Take it or leave it. All right, I'll add the incentive clause. But you pay for your vices yourself. And I'll want an advance, today. Not until you talk to Nick. Money does so much for my confidence. And I'll need a lot of that to convince Nick I'm his papa. You no good... Kemper, remember, I'm the father of your child. Deal? Deal. Now sign. And you... More copies before I change my mind. And you signed the check. You know you've got me over a barrel, don't you? What a lovely image. Contract. The check. Fine. Two, three. Now go talk to Nick. I already did. Last night. Hello? Hello? Good. Nobody's here. Hey, not bad. Good thing Ed always leaves the key in the same place. Yeah, well, Ed's nothing if not predictable. <laughs> You sure the Bowers never used this place in wintertime? I didn't used to. I'll call him just to make sure. Oh, maybe you shouldn't. Why not? He won't mind. Well, the whole point of eloping is so that nobody knows we're here. Nobody knows we're getting married. So that Roger doesn't know we're here. Well, you know, what if Ed slips up? Huh? Ed talked to Roger. I don't think so. Anyway, I should call him in case he's going to lend this to somebody. That was a good point. We wouldn't want anyone bursting in on us when we're celebrating our honeymoon. <laughs> it's not our honeymoon yet. Right. I know, but it's the next order of business. we got to get a justice of the peace. No, next order of business is unload the car. Okay? Isn't this great, baby? Just you and me alone up here in the woods. Yeah. 
Away from Roger, especially. Yeah. There's no way he's going to find us up here. Nobody's going to find us up here. <laughs> Hey, do you have a payphone? Right over there. Oh, great. Could you, could you make that our quarters, please? I need to make a call. Sure thing. You know, it certainly is pretty up here in the mountain. It'd be a nice place to get married, I think. Is there a minister uh, close by? Oh, Justice of the Peace, next town over. <laughs> you getting married, too? What? Oh, nothing. It's uh, just a lot of people seem to be getting married these days. It's about time it turned around. So, where's your intended? Oh, I don't, I don't have one. I was just hoping. I just always figured I'd get married and have a honeymoon someplace really romantic. Is there any place around here that you could recommend to someone? Well, this time of year, I don't know. Severe cold front moving into the area. Snow advisories are posted for higher elevations. Sounds like we're in for some cold weather. You know, I'm get about that hotel, if you... Here. Excuse me, sorry. Hi, Dylan. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Sharp, there, man. Hey, listen, have you seen Samantha around here today? Uh, she just went upstairs, but she just ordered breakfast too, so she should be right back. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot for your help. Yeah. Well, honey, maybe you left your math book over at our house. I didn't have it last night, and I need it for school. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll run the boy by Vanessa's. We'll pick it up, and then we'll come on back. You, would you wait here, and I'll take you into work together. Right. And, uh, you want to come with us? Mm, oh, no, honey, I'll be fine. Okay. You'll be right back, though, right? Sure will. Excuse me. Okay, hurry back. Dylan, I'm glad you're here. I, I want to run some ideas by you. What ideas? Oh, about Holly's wedding. Now, I thought it would be a real coup if I could get Holly and Daniel to exchange their vows on the love bug. You want them to get married on television? Well, sure. Tiny Tim did it. Now, I think that I can convince Holly to do it no problem, but Daniel, mm, I don't know, he doesn't seem very outgoing. So, if you were Daniel, what could I do to make you agree? Daniel? Bribe him. Oh, Dylan. Well, I do have some ideas, so let me tell you what I think. Hey. <laughs> Your housekeeper told me you'd be here. Listen, I owe you an apology, my man. What for? Well, I told you that I'd be working on this story with you, and I haven't done a damn thing lately. Yeah, well... You have had a couple of things on your mind. Yeah, yeah, I know that. But the story always comes first. That's what my father used to say. So, from now on in, you have me 24 hours a day until this case is broken. Right? <laughs> oh, man, am I glad to hear that. Because I have this feeling that this case is about to break wide open, and I don't want us to miss it. Why, did Marla tell you something different? No. He's been very quiet lately. Too quiet. And you think something's up? Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, while Mallet and Marler aren't talking, I think maybe I can get us some inside information. Why, do you see an inside here? Mm, yeah, you see that Ross Marler's niece, Samantha Marler, lives right upstairs from here, and I think maybe I can trip her up into giving us some inside information that she's been privy to that he might let slip. Sounds good. I like it. Well, you remember, though, anything. You need me day or night, I'm there, all right? That's good. How are things with you and Mindy? Better than ever. Why? Well, it's just that you sound like a guy who's trying to forget something. Well, I am. I was visited last night by one Eric Lubanichek. <laughs> you kidding? Nope. I'm not kidding. He's here? Yeah. In Springfield? Does Alexandra know? Well, I figured she's the one that brought him here. I mean, the lady's too much. She'll do anything to convince me that I'm her son. I mean, you should have heard this guy last night. It was really yeah, upsetting, well, you know. Sam, phone call. It's Harley. Oh, thanks. Harley, where are you? Well, I'm trying to catch up to Daniel and Holly. They took off last night to elope. I know. Harley, I want you to come back here right now. No way, Sam. I know they're around here someplace. I just lost track of them a half hour ago. It doesn't matter. Why don't you come back? We'll wait for the lab reports to come back. I can't, Sam. I can't let Daniel get away. Harley, if Daniel knows you're after him, he's dangerous, Harley. That's right. That's why I have to warn Holly. Har well, Harley? Sam, I can barely hear you. Listen, don't 
worry, I'll be careful. Uh, wait! Where are you, Harley? Harley! Where should I put this? Oh, anywhere. I'll unpack. That can wait. Honey, I really want to get settled in. Oh, baby, we've been driving all night. Relax. <laughs> it's great being up here all alone. Yeah, you think we have enough firewood? I'm sure we do. Just think, in the morning you're going to be Mrs. Daniel St. John. You want to take a nap? Oh, I'm not tired. Neither am I. <laughs> we, we really should be getting some supplies in. Later. This isn't like Springfield, you know, we can't just order out Chinese. Why don't you go down to the general store and uh, I'll have a nice hot bath waiting for you when you get there. Okay, that sounds great. Oh, we're gonna be so happy up here. Yeah, I already am. You knew I wanted to be there when he first saw you. What in the world possessed you? I merely wanted a peek at the boy. Unfortunately, he discovered me. A lovely old lighthouse. Obviously, he's inherited my good taste. You selfish, egotistical. What did you tell him? Everything. You didn't tell him about selling him to the man Nick thinks is his father? Natural. Oh, you idiot! You shouldn't have just dropped it on him like that. How did he react? He didn't believe it. Damn you. You've probably ruined everything. I should have been there. Why? To offer him a mother's comfort? He wouldn't have accepted it. I can assure you, he's quite cynical when it comes to you, my dear. He's confused. That's all. Why? What did he say? Oh, it's more a feeling I picked up. I'm sensitive to those things, you know. You have the sensitivity of a turnip. Well, what did you think? Isn't he handsome? Ah, uh, yes. Definitely has my good looks. Ha! But is that all? I mean, didn't you feel anything toward him? I'm not sure what you mean. Well, he's your son. But surely you, you felt something, a bond of some kind? A bond? Oh, yes. What? He was playing one of my albums when I found him. Oh, then he does still have his doubts. Let me have that a minute. Why? I'm tearing it up. I've no more use for you. Ah, but you do. As you said, Nick definitely has his doubts. And let's not forget, he was playing my album, not gazing fondly at one of your pictures. That means nothing. It means there's only one way to Nick's heart. Through me. He needs me. You're lying! Both of you! Look, I'll get right down a bit. That's right, sir. Time. Say, I, uh, thought you said that, uh, Henry was staying at the club last night. That's right, I did, and he did stay at the club. Oh, well, no wonder you wanted little Bill to stay with me and Nadine so bad last hey, night. Please, Billy, please. I just... I'm really not in the mood for this right now. Well, you know, it wouldn't be a good idea for Bill to come in here and catch you romancing some guy on the couch now, would it? I can assure you romance was the very last thing that was going on here last oh, night. As I see, you were working on contracts until late in the night. Who's the lucky guy this time, Madam President? There's no lucky guy. And none of this is any of your damn business. Oh, you couldn't manage to seduce one of my clients away from me? I wasn't trying to seduce anybody last night, Billy. I was almost raped. Sure. And how much did Alexandra pay you to lie about being Nick's father? 
I am his father, I assure you. Eric Luvanacek, your humble servant. Aren't you going to introduce me, Alexandra? Melinda Lewis, town tramp. Oh, you can't hurt me anymore, Alexandra. Nick loves me, and there's nothing that you can say or do that's going to change that. Well, if you are so blissfully secure, why are you here? Because I am sick and tired of how your lies and your games are affecting him. I want it to end. It will end, Mindy, in my favor. No, it won't. Pretty soon, Nick is going to have all the information he needs to prove that he's the McHenry's son. It won't prove it to me. When are you going to face the truth, Alexandra? How many times does Nick have to reject you? You are the one he'll end up rejecting once he finds out what you're really like. Oh, he knows what I'm like. And that's why he loves me. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Watching you two go at it reminds me of when women used to fight over me. Like father, like son. Nick is nothing like you. He's honest. You're nothing but a fraud. Correct. In every area but one. He is Nick's father. Even if he were, Nick would have nothing to do with him. You're pathetic, both of you. Give it up, Alexandra. Nick isn't going to get sucked into your games anymore. I'm afraid he won't have any choice. Oh, he's made his choice. Me. You two can rot in Paris for all I care. Pretty girl. And so then during the ceremony, I thought that we could uh, uh, cut away from, from the ceremony itself to uh, short clips of Daniel and Holly talking about each other. You know, like how they first met, what was the most romantic thing that Daniel ever did for Holly, how she got him to pop the question. You know, our love bug audiences just love to know those things. So, tell me, come on, what do you think? Uh, I think I gotta go. But your dad said to wait for him. Yeah, well, he's been gone quite a while. Yes, he has. And I gotta get to work. Uh, oh, honey, you don't have to worry about that. You're the boss's son. Well, that's all the more reason to get to work on time. Don't you have something to do? Uh, yeah, I'm supposed to meet with a caterer. Oh, by the way, do you know where I can find a, a Cupid fountain for the champagne? I in pink? Mm. No, but uh, if I see one, I'll let you know, okay? Great. You gotta yeah, go. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Damn that Vanessa. Officer, you're the police. You know her. Can't you... No, she's not really missing. I just talked to her on the phone. See, that's just it. She didn't tell me where she was. But there's a murderer out there. What do you mean, my obsession? This is serious. Listen, if anything happens to Harley, this is going to be on your head. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. I was just going to use that's the phone. Okay. Are, are you okay? Is there a problem? No, I'm fine. Well, well, I heard you say murderer. Is, is Harley in trouble? Why won't anybody listen to me? Samantha, I'll listen. Come on, come on, come over here. Sit down. Sit down with me and my partner, Nick. I'll introduce you. Nick! Nick, I want you to meet uh, Samantha Marler, Ross Marler, the DA's niece. Hi, Nick McHenry, Nick my McHenry. partner. Thanks. Here, sit down right here. Right there. How are you? She's worried. She's afraid that her friend Harley's in some kind of trouble. More than that. It is? What it, oh, yeah, of course. It's got to be the weather old investigation. How did you know? Oh, it's because your uncle's been feeding us, you know, little tidbits to help us write our article. Yeah, yeah, it seems like he's very close to nailing his man. Yeah. Well, it's the wrong man. Why do you say that? Because I know who killed Jean. I've given Uncle Ross all this proof, but he just wants me to keep quiet about it. That must be very frustrating for you. Believe me, it is. And now there are other people in danger. What other people? Harley. What difference does it make? Nobody believes me anyway. Won't believe you. Look, we can help you, Sam, but we have to know what you know. So who do you think killed Gene Weatherby? You'll think I'm crazy. No, you won't. Uncle Ross and Mallard are wrong. It's not Roger. It's Daniel St. John. Daniel, are you sure? Yes. All of the real evidence points to him. What evidence do you have? Uh, that 
That is a long story. Hey, <laughs> that is okay. You just start right at the very beginning and don't leave a thing out. Well, it all started when I called Jean in Boston. Mm -hmm. Lose your suitcase? What? Only the warm clothes you need. Oh, uh, I just didn't realize it was going to be so cold up here. In the mountains <laughs> this time of year? Yeah, well, that's what I get for rushing out like I did. Huh. Uh, do you have any long underwear? Oh, sure. Right over here. That's Bob. Well... <laughs> They're awfully big, don't you think? <laughs> uh, you're about my wife's build, except up top. This size fits her fine. Uh, do you suppose I could try them on? Oh, sure. The storeroom. Don't mind the beer and the soda. I'm back. Well, you and the Mrs. to be find a place to stay? Yeah, yeah. We just, uh, we need a few supplies. <laughs> and she gave me a list. This may take a while. That's okay. I can wait. Sonny, are you sure you're okay with Mrs. McGowan taking you to no school? No problem, Dad. Sure. Thanks for letting me stay over last night. Okay. Bye. Bye, Mom. Bye, Dad. What do you mean you were almost raped? Just what I said, and I don't want to talk about it anymore. Well, hold on a second. You can't drop a line like that and then say I don't want to talk about it. Were you outside walking in the dark by yourself? No, I was here in the house. <clears throat> what, did a burglar come in or something? No, it wasn't a burglar. It was a... It was a business associate. I, we, we, we'd had a meeting here earlier, and then he, and then he came back, and... Well, darn, I mean, if it was someone you knew, he... he... What? What are you trying to say? Look, I can assure you that the very last thing that I wanted was to be attacked in oh, her bedroom. Oh, hey, Vanessa. Don't. Are you okay? I'm fine. I'm fine. But I probably wouldn't have been if Fletcher hadn't arrived when he did. Oh, so Fletcher spent the night, huh? Yeah. Fletcher spent the night on the couch. Although I don't expect you would believe that any more than you believe that I didn't deserve what happened last night. Oh, Vanessa, I didn't say that. Oh, no, but that's what you've been implying, isn't it? I, I mean, that just, just because I'm a woman and I succeed in the world of business, which is a man's world, that somehow I've got to succeed by being a little seductive? Oh, Vanessa... No, it's okay. It's all right for you guys. You can schmooze and turn on the good old boy charm, and that's the way you can win your clients. But if a woman wants to compete, Pete, what does she do? Tries to be interesting, tries to be good company. And what happens? She's an easy mark. She's no good. Uh, no, I didn't Look, say I that. work hard. I work very hard. And when I come in that door at night, it's not over because I've got my little boy, I've got my father to look after. And it's so damn unfair for you men to assume that just because okay, I'm. Just tell me one thing. Was it Pierce Daly? No, it wasn't Pierce Daly, and it wasn't Michael Clark, and it's none of your business. It wasn't any of your clients. Well, darling, I didn't mean to assume that it was... You know what? You should be feeling very smug right now. You should be feeling good because you were right. You warned me not to go out with any of my business associates. Otherwise, the word would get around that Vanessa Chamberlain was an easy mark. Well, no, Vanessa, and it stop did. It, oh, Vanessa. it did. You know, that she liked to sweeten her deals, kind of. Funny that it took so long for me to get a reputation. I guess I just forgot what little boys all you men are. What is that? You mean you've seen other guys? And... Uh huh. Yeah, I am Billy. Different one every single night. How's that make you feel? But <laughs> up! Right! No, hey, hey, really hey, 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 Darling, I don't want anything bad to happen to you at all. At all. Hey! 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 I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I hate that woman. I like her. But then I always did have exquisite taste in blondes. She's nothing but a spoiled little rich girl. Beautiful. And rich, too, is she? An heiress. 
a bimbo with a rich daddy. Billy Lewis of Lewis Oil. Is that so? No wonder she has such an uh, independent personality. Independent? She's a parasite, feeding off every man she can find. She's obviously very much in love with Nick. I doubt if she'll give him up very easily. He'll give her up, as all her husbands did. All her husbands? And so young. She's made a career of it and failed at it as miserably as she's failing at that so-called fashion business of hers. She ought to design bed sheets instead of clothes. She's far more familiar with them. Well, I think she's got a real fire. In fact, she reminds me of you. What? Passionate, willful, from a rich, distinguished family. Distinguished? <laughs> the Lewises? Country yokels? Barely two generations away from slopping hogs. <laughs> Whereas the Spaldings are an entire three generations away from pirates. The source of my fortune never seemed to bother you all those years I supported you. Which reminds me, the banks will be opening soon. I must cash that check. Hold it. Now, wait a minute, Eric. We have plans to discuss here. Ah! Wait, where are you? I don't even know where you're staying, Eric! I wasn't pitying. I just want the respect I deserve, and I'm going to get dressed and go to work. I don't want you to talk about this to anybody. Sure. I just want you to know if there's, a, if there's anything I can do for you, and I mean anything. Hello? Is anybody home? Just a second, Nadine. I just want you to know that you're not alone here. I'm on your side. You don't have to face this stuff alone. You are scalding you, Billy. And then when we found the blood on the plaque, we were convinced that it was Daniel who killed Jean. Well, he sure had the motive. Yeah, but Uncle Ross won't believe me. I realize that the evidence we found so far looks circumstantial, but I know he did it. I know it. Well, then you have to go with your gut instinct. Yeah, and, and I've got to convince Uncle Ross to get the police to go after Harley because she could be in real danger right now. And Holly. Yeah. What are we going to do? All right, now, did Harley tell you where she was? No, she hung up before I could find out. Did you say anything to your Uncle Ross about this plaque? No, we wanted to wait until the lab guy analyzed the sample we gave him to make sure that it was Jean's blood. That could be the most vital piece of evidence in this case. Yeah, and then it would convince Uncle Ross to get the police to go after Harley, right? Yeah. Okay, where are you headed? I'm going to go to Daniel's office. I'm going to try and get a picture of this plaque. Good. Okay, we're going to go to the police lab. We're going to see if we can hurry along these lab boys with test results. Sounds good. All right. I'll Hey, I can't talk to you. sweetheart. Things going crazy with this case. Oh, okay. okay. Good luck. Good luck. May I join you? about Roger lately. It almost seems like he actually cares about me. Every now and then I get glimpses of the man I fell in love with and married. What's happening to me? I must be crazy. Daniel sees this he will freak. Dr. Bauer there. Well, I guess I ought to about just do it. Oh, uh, didn't I see some, some cartons of birch beer out here earlier? Oh, yeah, I put them in the storeroom there. Uh, go pick out what you want. Thanks. Uh, excuse me, is this door over here? Store. Uh,
sweaters by Vitruvian Designs. Be sure to be with us tomorrow for another full hour of Guiding Light.